Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Learn It Live webinar uh, series event. So tonight we're talking about Price Action Masterclass. Uh, my name is Thomas Atkinson, as always, joined by Ty Annabella from FX Evolution. How are you, Ty? How have you been? Hi, good, thank you. Good. Yeah, now tonight's webinar is going to be a beauty. We love Price Action. It's one of the things that governs pretty much everything that we do. Um, it is a little bit of a masterclass, so uh, it might be a little bit advanced um, for some new people, but look, feel free to fire off any questions. We're going to do our best to answer questions throughout the webinar and also at the end. So if, you, if there's something that you're not quite getting, um, yeah, we'll be able to help you out uh, hopefully throughout the webinar. But we'll also be giving away a few links that will actually assist you. We've got a cheat sheet that we're going to be able to give you on price action and a couple of other little goodies for tonight. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. Absolutely, Ty. So look, price action is one of our favorite things. It's probably the basis of many of our trade systems. And, and in essence, we think it's one of the most important things that you can learn about trading. So hopefully uh, everyone enjoys tonight and they um, get out of it at least something. Now, I also do want to just have a quick bit of housekeeping. We'll mostly be going uh, from the slides directly into a few uh, different uh, things in the market at the moment. So we'll spend as much time as we can in the market what's happened over the past week and look over that as well because I think the best way is putting the theory into practice and this is meant to be a price action masterclass after all. So Ty, before we get started, just the risk warning. It's important that everyone understands the information provided in this webinar tonight has been produced by a third party and does not reflect the opinion of Pepperstone and the information has been provided without any alteration or verification. It's also important to understand that this uh, the information contained in this webinar is for a generic nature and uh, for educational purposes only and does not take into consideration your personal needs or circumstances. So Ty, what are we going to be covering tonight? We're going to be looking at how to correctly identify several patterns and correctly analyse support and resistance areas. We're going to be looking at building a trading system based on price action. So we're looking at different uh, ways of kind of building a bit of a business plan there and what market conditions we should look for before using our trading strategy. And of course, just a couple of tips and tricks. And as always, if you have questions, please ask them while we're going through the webinar tonight. So we, we use this slide a lot, Ty, and that's uh, the top down approach. And we're actually going to go live into the market and have a look at uh, what happened over the last week in Euro and USDX to, to see the top down approach in practice. But you really, whether you're trading a five minute time frame, 15 minute time frame, one hour, four hour daily, whatever system or time frame you're trading, often a mistake that people make is that they only look at one time frame or they only look at maybe two relevant time frames. They don't consider what the larger time frames are doing and they don't consider where the price is. So sometimes they're buying or selling into major support or resistance on a larger time frame. And we need to remember the bigger the time frame, the more money or the more market flow and the more people that are going to be able to see that because a monthly closes every month. It's very, very um, slow moving. So a lot of people see those types of patterns weekly, every week, and of course daily, um, every day. So the bigger traders often stick to those larger time frames, and you do not want to fall into the trap of just looking at the 15 minute one hour and, and Ty look there's something that we did many many years ago back in 2005 2006 2007 where we were looking at the smaller time frames and not really paying enough attention to the big ones what are your thoughts on that it's just really important it's so important and and look even today like we, we actually run our it's a new newly launched actually telegram group and even a couple of things today were actually brought up where yeah, some of the bigger time frames weren't being looked at and it really had an impact on some of the smaller trades that that people were potentially looking at putting on so important to know what the bigger picture is doing and a lot of people you know, fall into the trap of thinking well we're only scalping so it doesn't really matter what the bigger time frame is doing but really it actually makes a big difference because if you can get um, if you can get it right and you can actually get the direction right for your trade, it's like going um, swimming with the stream. It really is. I know everybody says trade um, with the trend is always going to be easier. Um, never a truer word has been said in trading. You've got to identify the trend. So even if you're trading on as small as a five minute chart, it's really important to know what the 15 minute and what the one hour and four hour are doing. And just as importantly, where those key support and resistance zones are to make sure you're not going into a, a big wall of trouble before you've even given yourself a chance to actually get going. So just uh, 
just to get started, Ty, uh, with horizontal support and resistance, now we are going to assume that you have a decent base of how to identify support and resistance tonight. Uh, so basically, the idea and the reason we love horizontal support and resistance is it's the easiest one for people to see, and it's one of the most common things that everyone uses in the industry. Whether you're a, a Goldman Sachs employee trading, you know, billions of dollars, or you're somebody that's just even, you know, trading a few million dollars, support and resistance and horizontal support and resistance are used by so many people and so obvious to see. And when we understand support, uh, we can understand potential buy opportunities. So here we've got a level that's been reached and we can see that every time it comes to this level, it bounces off and buys up. And then the idea is that the more times that this level is reached and the more times it bounces off this level, probably the greater chance that it is eventually going to make a new high and potentially move up um, in, the, in the direction that we want it to. How does it look like in the real market? Something like this. Uh, you might see the market moving up, come back and then test an area. So we've seen it test here and multiple tests across this support line. So we've identified support. Resistance is the opposite of that. And we'll just quickly cover this one right now. So we've got the resistance where price has reached a high and then it has sold off from that high. And you can see the more times it's happened here, it's time it's happened one, two, three. And on the fourth time, we might be able to say, well, it's happened previously, so why won't it happen again? And we can potentially place sell orders at this level. It's very important to understand great horizontal um, resistance and support. And we actually suggest that you maybe even consider line charts for looking at horizontal resistance and support. So Tyron, let's actually jump straight into the charts. And I've got here, Euro US dollar. So this is a big favorite for a lot of people. Obviously the Euro US dollar is heavily traded <clears throat> and we're going to do a bit of a top-down approach uh, before we get into the horizontal um, resistance and support. So here we've got the Euro monthly and I think it's pretty clear for most people to see at least over the last couple of months, we'll zoom in over here on the right hand side, that while it hasn't been in a massive you know, downtrend, it's in moving hugely and fastly and things like that like it did over on this side, it's pretty clearly been moving down, Ty. I think everyone can probably agree with that. Yeah, most most definitely. I <laughs> think we're going to get too many arguments there. So what we like to do here is we actually like to go to a line chart and we like to just draw these, these kind of larger time frame, maybe support and resistance levels that we can see very, very clearly. And we do this, and usually I like to make them a different colour. That's a good top tip. If you make them maybe a blue or a, a red or a green or something you remember, and you just leave them on your charts. And that means that maybe if you're trading a 15 minute time frame or even a one hour, a few months time, and you randomly see this green or this purple color appear, you know, wow, well, wait, better quickly go check that monthly. Uh, so that's, that's just important because these levels do matter in the larger time frames. Then we go to a weekly and we often like to leave it again, still in the line charts just to see. And sometimes we'll readjust our support and resistance levels and we'll maybe make them a little bit cleaner to the weeklies because the weeklies obviously a bit better data there and then we've got maybe you know another one that we put in etc and so forth then we go to the daily and we usually like to still draw our more recent kind of horizontal support resistance levels you see this one's a really great level as well because of the amount of times that it's been respected very, very important to understand the theory of role reversal. And at this point, this is where we actually like to switch over to the candles. Now, you can see automatically, it becomes a lot harder to suddenly see your support resistances. And that's because the line chart is based on the close price and the candles are, of course, you know, showing the weeks and it's a little bit messier. So one of the, two of the lines we've drawn here, specifically these resistance up here, which is the most recent, and this really beautiful level of the 110 kind of 80 area, they're really significant because we saw on that line chart, we'll go back to it again. Look how nice this looks, Ty. I mean, when you see this, I mean, it always makes me excited because I, I love uh, price action. But when, when you do see this type of thing, this level was always going to be key. So when it broke up and through and it came back down, it tested this level the first time, it was always going to be an incredibly key level for it to potentially buy back up and maybe even reach the highs again. And that's just because of what we've seen previously. We've seen this uh, 
first touch over here, second touch breaks through, finds uh, resistance at the previous support, which is the third area here, the role reversal area, and we are going to assume you know what role reversal is to a degree. And then it sells off, comes through, breaks, and then of course the first touch moves back up and reaches that high. So all of these things have happened before, and at this, we might come into the market at this point and say, well, question mark, what do we think is going to happen next? So we know this very key level, we can do all of this analysis before anything that's happened over the last week. Ty, anything else to state on that one? I mean, I think it's pretty- it does, It's technical analysis 101 that, I mean, it's just absolute perfection. And it happens a lot more than people think. Like when you do this type of analysis, you're gonna really see how often this occurs. And it just makes your trading so much easier because you really know those key levels. Like you're really identifying the levels that you know are either going to give you a really good chance of holding up, uh, and which obviously makes it a great place to put stop losses behind. But most mm -hmm. importantly, not putting take profits in front of because what you don't want to be doing is trading straight into a brick wall uh, because it really you know, it debilitates your ability to actually get into a, a decent amount of profit before you can actually you know, put into a break even or a, a trailing stop loss in place. I just wanted to quickly ask, we've just got, um, I think, Frank and a few, and maybe another person that doesn't have audio. Does everyone have audio? If you could just post uh, like a question or a, just a reply in the room. Just want to make sure everyone is hearing. Okay, we've got quite a few saying yes. So uh, every, yeah, everyone's saying yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. About, about uh, 60 people said yes. So thank you very yeah. much for that. <laughs> <laughs> no problems. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but, so if you if you are having a few issues, yeah, you're just gonna have to yeah just play around with your settings on, on your app because this, the sound is definitely coming through. So hopefully you'll be able to um yeah to pick it up. Perfect. All right. So we've we've analysed that this is the key level and we. I know you don't ever want to see things in the past and history, but I think everyone can probably see why this was a key level before anything that's happened recently. Then once we've gone from the line chart, we switch over to the candle chart and many people out there will know what this is. It's basically a double top pattern, very clear double top pattern. Uh, Tyron actually post uh, that, that link to the free cheat sheet for everybody. Um, double top patterns are super common. Hopefully most people that come into this price action uh, masterclass will know what it is. But in essence, what you're looking for is you're looking for a high, then an intervening trough, then an equal high, and then of course the market usually sells off. And then a great double top pattern comes off a bit of a nice uptrend. So here we've got that uptrend, we've got price making the resistance, coming down, price making the resistance coming down again. And then if it does break through the intervening trough and make a new low, then usually what you're doing is you're looking for the distance of the double top pattern to happen again. So you see, I've already got this drawn up here. The distance happens again. Now, there's so many advantages for why you wanna analyze this. Or automatically it gives you the potential for placing a trade on the Euro US dollar. Um, you can look to sell the Euro USD at this point here, and then of course take it down to the lows. But it's much more than that. It's not just saying, okay, well on the daily I've analyzed this. What if we now have a bias when it breaks through to say, okay, I believe the Euro is short to potentially down at this level down here. If we believe that, then why wouldn't we be able to train, trade potentially the price action on the way down on the smaller timeframes with tighter stop losses? So a lot of people, we know everyone loves to scalp. We used to love scalping as well. I totally get the 15 minute. I know why people love it. Um, but if you analyze this larger time frame, you go, okay, I've got a bias now towards the short side. Why couldn't we then take the role reversals on the way down? So here we've got the Euro US dollar. We've analyzed the double top, the breaks come through. Let's now have a look at the smaller time frames and see how price has interacted with this zone. So first high, the close has happened comes back up, kind of goes a little bit further than we like, breaks down and clearly makes a new low. So at this point, you definitely are seeing a absolute confirm it has broken past the intervening trough. So this, this particular candle here. If we're placing a trade and we're saying, okay, we're in on this candle here, then where would it be most logical for us to place stop losses? One of them would of course be behind the uh, the previous kind of swing. 
or behind up here or the most conservative up here on a double top. So generally you'll learn double top patterns, the conservative stop loss is above the previous intervening trough highs. Then the second thing would be that you would place the stop loss either behind the last swing with a decent amount of pips behind or the previous swing. So you've got kind of like your most conservative stop loss, you've got your slightly more conservative stop loss and you've got your super aggressive stop loss. And notice how the price action when it comes back up, it doesn't quite stop it out Ty. Very important and that always gives you a lot of confidence that you're selecting really great stop loss areas. Now I'd be kind of tempted to go with this, the slightly conservative kind of uh, uh, stop loss area uh, just because I think that's, that's the best thing to do long term. Uh, but you can always do the aggressive one and of course the risk is going to be uh, a lot less in terms of pips. You're going to be able to trade a larger contract and therefore your reward uh, will be bigger as well. However, you are going to get stopped out a little bit more doing this. So Ty, what are your thoughts on really conservative, slightly conservative and of course more aggressive stop losses? Yeah, I think it comes down to um, experience really. Like when you've got the, when you've done it for long enough, you can start to play around with all of the, the different concepts. When you're first starting out, you know, it's always better to be conservative. And um, unfortunately, most people when they're starting out actually go the other way and are usually more aggressive because they want to use potentially lar larger lot sizes or they want the action to happen or they're afraid of losing too much. But in truth, when you're using the right risk management criteria like having you know, a, a fixed amount stop loss uh, for a dollar amount or a percentage amount, you know, ideally you want to be making um, everything as conservative as possible. No question about that. Uh, and that's what gives you the confidence to, once you've really, you know, come familiar with the markets that you're actually trading and the patterns that you're actually trading, then you can start to get a little bit more aggressive on, on your approach. And I don't mean being silly with your stop losses and putting them really close and just hoping the market moves in your direction straight away. I'm talking about, you know, maybe uh, potentially approaching a lower high um, on the way down and being a little bit closer to it and probably being a little bit more, I guess, uh, aggressive on the movements as the market makes new lows, you know, adjusting your stop loss and following the price down to give yourself the best opportunity to capture as much of the trade as possible. Because the beautiful thing about trading with the trend is we don't really know, um, you know how long that can go for. It can go sometimes for many multiples of risk versus reward. And generally, you know, the aim is to go for the next support or resistance zone. And sometimes that can be quite a bit away. So moving your stop loss down and protecting your trades as it's, as it's moving down is a really uh, big key thing uh, when it comes to placing your stop losses. So when we're talking about also moving stop losses down, let's talk about trades within a trade. So as we mentioned before, we've analysed the double top tie and then we've decided, okay, well, the market could potentially get down to this level. We've got a bias. Now let's trade that bias or consider trading on smaller timeframes. So here uh, we've got the lows, so that the previous pickup, this is now a one hour time frame, and we can see it made a new low and then it came back and it did a roll reversal. So it tested the previous support and that support became resistance and then it sold off from that point. So generally speaking, these are the kind of areas, here it happened again, these are the kind of areas where if you've missed the initial entries, you can potentially get involved in the trend on the smaller timeframes. And then when you've analyzed it, let's say on the hour, because remember it's a daily going into four hour into an hour, you then analyze the role reversal areas. Then we can look for maybe 15 minute confirmations. So we can dial down even further and start to really pinpoint our entries into the direction of the trend. So here we've got the 15 minute chart. Let's just quickly go down there. Uh, we can see these lines, these are our role reversal lines. Maybe we see certain candles or certain things that go, okay, it's time to get in. This is a really nice one here, Ty. This is a shooting star um, candle formation coming off. We can see here, this would be a really, really nice sell. What you do is you'd sell just under the candle. You'd usually put a couple of pips underneath the candle, then you place your stop loss above, and then of course you take it in the direction of the trend. And you need to be aware of uh, what you're probably going to expect. So generally you would expect potentially all the way down to the bottom of the overall big trend if you're going to hold it for a long period or the previous kind of swing distance. That's also another good one and you take about 80% of what you expect. So the previous swing distance is the previous move 
And then if you if you're looking at that, then you would basically figure out how many pips that is, and then take that to 80%, uh, and you would place, of course, your stop loss above whatever your trigger event is. So here, this could be the trigger event that gets you in. Makes a lot of sense. I think Tyrone would agree that that's a great little candle because we've got to remember we don't see what happens after. Um, we're just thinking what is happening at this point, and this this is the kind of candle you're looking for. Over here, when it comes and tests this previous support that becomes resistance, maybe instead what we look for is something like this. We've got a nice base, we've got this nice support that's been reached, one, two, makes a new low, maybe that's our trigger event, we've seen the previous highs. In this case, we'd want to place above to make it more conservative because this isn't actually that many pips and then we'd place the short. And look, at, for a little while it's a little bit scary, but this would make quite a lot of sense. So I like to go analyze the daily, find the pattern, go to the four hour, potentially trade within that pattern or see trades, use the hour off the daily pattern to, to look for role reversal. And then if you're looking for entries off the one hour, use the 15 minute as a guideline to potentially get you into those trades. And look how many opportunities that one gave you to get in. Like when you identified that role reversal area, like you've had uh, basically five opportunities to get into that trade on the short. So even if you've missed the first couple, every single one of those um, gave you another opportunity to get in. So it's, um, yeah, really, yeah, really, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. Even if you are trading a smaller time frame, like the 15 minute, like you're seeing you know, pretty much a, a day and a half worth of trading there. So at some point, you would have hopefully been able to, to see that. I'm getting a, a few questions um, for people who are looking for the cheat sheet. So just check your chat window um, and you'll see the link in that. So there's a, in, in your chat window, you'll see a link on that and you can click on that and you can just download the free um, cheat sheet from there. That goes over a lot of the patterns that we'll be talking about tonight. Okay, Ty, so we're gonna add, it's again the masterclass, so we understand this is a, <laughs> a little bit bigger. We have done previous price action stuff, so check that out on Pepperstone's um, YouTube, you can look up uh, the, the different um, price action based webinars if you want to find out more about certain things. But the US dollar index tie. So whenever we're trading Euro, whenever we're trading Euro USD in particular, check out the USDX in the Pepperstone platform, whether it be MetaTrade 4 or 5, CTrade or whatever. The reason you want to do this is often whatever the US dollar index is doing, the Euro USD is doing. And that's because the US dollar index is made up of predominantly the Euro check that out online, search it, Google it, uh, figure out why it's it's um, it's because it's made up mostly of it. So what kind of pattern did we have here, Ty, on the daily on the US dollar index? Well, lo and behold, it was a double bottom, okay? So whenever we see the same pattern forming on both currency pairs, that's kind of like an extra little tick because you know that it makes sense. So what you're seeing on the Euro makes sense on the US dollar index as well. And we can also get little hints of what potentially may be happening on the Euro from the US dollar index. So sometimes one of them kind of is slightly in front of the other one in terms of a signal. And I think a lot of people can appreciate that if you're slightly in front and you get a confirmation on one of them, then potentially the other one's gonna confirm as well and you can be in at a better level. So hopefully that does make sense uh, to everybody. Here we've got the daily, we jump into the four hour, you can see the break happened, very similar kind of uh, price action happened afterwards and then in terms of the distance that we would be expecting it'd be something like uh, this range. So in terms of full completion it hasn't happened yet but it has definitely reached a point where you would absolutely be broken even if you were in the daily uh, trade, daily four hour trade. So that's just a little bit of uh, price action basis on the US dollar index and the euro. We'll go over a few others in a minute, but we'll get into the slides first. So uh, hopefully that does make sense. Okay, I'll just quickly go back to this step two. Again, we talk about this all the time, but we really love the daily four hour, one hour charts. We think that if you're a price action trader, someone that maybe has a busy lifestyle, only wants to check the charts, maybe 45 minutes to an hour a day. Because remember, you do need to be super consistent in trading. So if you're just trading Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's actually pretty good. Um, you, that's fine. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the best trading days of the week because the most volatility and the most markets have been open, etc. 
they usually when it gets its trend and, and gets a bit of a direction for the week. Uh, but we love these time frames. We do suggest them, especially for swing traders and even just predominantly price action traders that want to trade based on role reverse on those kind of things. You should be able to always find around three to five good opportunities per week uh, with a selection of around 10 to 20 great trading pairs. So you don't have to make the pairs too many, uh, but you usually can get some really good trades. So points-based system in price action tied. Uh, we always talk all the time about how you need to have a business plan for your trading strategy. So one thing that you always need to do is you need to consider what is your trading system going to be? What is the basis of your trading system? And then define it somehow so that you can replicate it. And a lot of people just go, okay, that looks, you know, I've got the RSI, I've got the stochastic, I've got the MACD, I'm going to trade it. And they then they take snapshots of it, which is a great first step, but you don't have consistency with it. So you need to really uh, be consistent and give points to everything. And we've got a basic one uh, that we'll, we'll have at the end of, of this webinar tonight. But another thing I want to mention is that learning your peaks and troughs is really important for learning role reversal as well. So make sure you start to learn things about peaks and troughs and trend and reading trend based on candles and bars, in particular bars, often underutilized. I mean, how many people do you see use bar charts, Ty? Yeah, not a lot, actually. Um, a, a lot of the, the coaching that we do, everybody's always got the standard candles on. I haven't seen too many line charts either, but it is, yeah, look, it's personal preference when it comes to bars or candles, but yeah, line charts are definitely underutilized. It's really, really important to, to break it down. Similar to what we did before, because it really isolates those zones that we like to talk about, the su support and resistance. And also it can really highlight patterns as well. It can be a really, really good tool to highlight the patterns, just that little bit clearer because it does take away the noise. Got a good question here from Martin. Uh, times of day that are best to trade, especially if you prefer manual entries. Uh, actually, one of the best times of the day is just to wait for daily closes. So just after, make all of your analysis just after the daily close and then set just some mobile alerts if you can or email alerts. And unless you're getting a mobile alert or an email alert for maybe saying, yeah, enter now based on whatever your system is, um, then you don't really need to be looking at the charts. And we often find people burn out. We've been doing this a long time. We love charts. I actually find like looking at candlesticks kind of like a computer game. It's a bit addictive. But um, at the same time, you will burn out if you do the 18 hours that we used to do every day. Uh, we did that for about six, 12 months and it uh, doesn't, doesn't work out that well <laughs> long term. So let's get back into the charts, Ty, and uh, have a look at another uh, pair. So we've got the US dollar yen up here. Uh, and I just wanted to bring this one up because it's a super large uh, kind of time frame. But many people will have heard of things like inverse head and shoulders and head and shoulders. We hope you guys have. So here we've got a uh, left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder. And you can see that it's right on that kind of neckline level and it's kind of playing with it right now. And this is based on the daily chart. So it's really important to understand uh, again, patterns and, and recognize those when they're at uh, when they're in the market. And another good kind of tip, and the reason I want to bring this up, is you can also kind of move it across with head and shoulders, like double tops or double bottoms, and use line charts to potentially see it faster and see it more clearly. So always, when doing that top-down approach, go monthly, weekly, daily on the line chart, and then potentially switch over. And whenever you see the head and shoulders formed nicely on the line chart, it means that it's formed well. It's formed clearly and it's formed with closes of candles. So the market's really considered those levels very well. What are your thoughts on that one, Ty, in terms of being able to read on a, on, see a pattern on the line chart compared to just seeing a pattern on the candles? Yeah, I think it just makes a lot more sense because it does, again, take away the noise of, of the market. So if you can see it clearly and you draw it up clearly on, on a line chart, even if you take it back to a candle chart after that, um, your your pattern will be drawn. And even though there's a little bit of noise around it, uh, you're going to have you know wicks uh, that are going to go above and beyond some of the lines. I'd always stick to the ones that are the most clear. So when you do use a line chart, you are going to see you know, the, the clearest pattern. And then when you do go back to the candle, ignore the wicks because we know that that is noise. We're using the um, the close price on on the line charts because it's the default setting. And uh, it does take away a lot of the noise and they often do yeah, reign supreme 
when you are drawing up patterns. But that said, the good patterns um, appear on, on any chart as well. So if they're really good patterns, you'll definitely see them. To show everybody a, a really nice pattern that happened uh, earlier on um, pound. So here we've got a descending triangle. When you see something this clear, it's always great, especially when you've got all those moving averages kind of congested in a zone and you clearly are breaking that 200 moving average as well, which is one we use. But notice this support, one touch or one touch, two touches, three touches, four touches, it breaks and it goes through and it really confirms and then bang. I mean, the, the sell off was way more than the, um, than the pattern requires, but the point is that it was a very clear, very nice looking uh, pattern. So th this does happen all the time. You'll see it time and time again. Good kind of rule of thumb whenever you're looking at a descending triangle or an ascending triangle is you don't want them to go all the way to the end because then they just peter out and they become like this and then doesn't even look like the pattern that you're thinking about. Um, you want them to close or go through at around a third left of the ascending triangle or the descending triangle. So hopefully everyone uh, gets something out of that, but a third is really, really good. And in terms of the range that you generally want, usually about this range. And what Ty and I like to do is we usually take the range, just bring it over a little bit there, and we use that range to see whether it makes sense to previous support or resistance levels. It's kind of like proofing the trade in the market. So you can see here there was that massive kind of sell off. Now, uh, this happened, I think this was the glitch day, Ty, in terms of the day that uh, had a massive run on multiple currencies and it was like based on low liquidity over January. So you have to ignore that to a degree. But notice here on the left hand side, it was a previous support level. So if that is what you think the take profit should be based on the pattern, that means that the market has considered that level. It's considered this pattern and it's considered if this pattern was to occur and become a self-fulfilling prophecy, would it go to a level that makes sense? In this case, it makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. And even if you took your trade off here and you said, okay, cool, I've sold it at this level and then it goes on and makes 7,000 more pips or whatever it might do it doesn't really matter because you know that the market considered this level. Quite a few candles here, nice little pickup, and then of course it sold through. So you should be incredibly happy if you've taken a trade like this into this level, taken your profit, and then gotten out of it and moved on to the next one because that is actually the right thing to do. What are your thoughts on that one as well, Ty? Yeah, no, it's when you follow the rules um, and, and you will get familiar with the rules as well. Like a lot of the patterns um, have their own preset rules. You've just got to do it and trust the the process. If you like, you've got to really trust that the, the technicals will play out because look, most of the time, that's what technical analysis is. It's just history repeating itself. So you have to have faith in the, in the patterns that you're trading and the systems that you're trading to make sure that um, you don't break the rules. It's pretty much uh, nearly as straightforward as that. I know we can keep repeating that um, till our heart's content, but trading is really as, as simple as that. And if you trade what you see, um, which is what price action is giving us all of the time, that's the most important part. Another reason I wanted to highlight this chart so much, Ty, is look at what's happened when the market has come back, even many months, like, but this was back in uh, May, Look at what's happened when the markets come back to that key zone. So we highlighted the zone over here on the left. We then saw that that was a pretty key zone uh, in terms of the pattern makes sense to it and it was consolidating. And look at this, when it's had that big move up, oh look, it's consolidating at the same mm -hmm. zone. Yeah. It's and amazing. that's a real consolidation. That's, that's, that's many weeks. That's probably about three weeks or maybe four weeks worth of trading there. So Yeah, but it, it, what a great level for you to target when you're taking this long, if you were taking this long, perfect level to target. Makes sense. Remember this one here, when you trade a long enough period of time, you'll realize some anomalies. And that really was an anomaly. And sometimes it does happen over January. But if we zoom this out and look at that monthly, like we said with the top down approach, go to line, you can see support over here, support over here, support over here, go to the weekly. Oops, seems to be loading a little bit slow there for me, but that's all right. I'll let that load and bring it back in a minute. 
Sure. Just while you're doing that, actually, I've, I've got quite a few questions asking about um, checking out certain currency pairs. We're actually, this is a teaching webinar, so we're actually not doing that um, in this particular webinar. But if you are interested in um, knowing what the currency pairs are doing live in the markets, or if you have any requests that you'd like us to check out, you're uh, welcome to join our webinar, which starts uh, about 15 minutes after this one finishes. It's uh, nine o'clock um, Melbourne time. I've put the link in the chat window again. So anybody who would like to join us for that webinar, that's actually a live analysis webinar where we talk about some of the things we're talking about tonight, but in the live market and we do live analysis on what's happening in the market now. So feel free to click on the link and join that webinar, which starts 15 minutes after this one. Got a question here from Charles. I'll answer this one, Ty. Is there a better time to trade or a better market such as London or New York? So look, if you're an Australian, it's actually kind of good to be able to trade, let's say London, because we'll generally be finishing work uh, if you're a nine to five kind of person around the, just before the, around the time London does open. If you're more of a scalper and you want to get into price action and and trade more of a uh, maybe couple of hours or three, four hour period, then yeah, I think London's actually one of the best. And I actually would recommend that you, you start about half an hour before London open, um, spend some time on the charts and often things will actually break just before the open. Uh, so yeah, London opens great. New York open, it's in the middle of kind of London's lunchtime and, and New York open, it can be okay. Uh, but I think London opens one of the best for Forex. Uh, in answer to the question of when it, when, what time is it in Brisbane, it'll depend on daylight savings time. So you can just, uh, there's plenty of clocks out there. If you search Forex open clocks or you can get MetaTrader indicators, um, definitely check that out uh, because it changes all the time. We go to daylight savings time, so do they, changes everything. So combinations tie or channel patterns, uh, very basic kind of thing for everyone to learn. We do assume that you know what a channel pattern is for tonight's webinar, so definitely check that out. But the importance of learning what a channel is, is that you need to think about when I've trapped price on the daily or weekly, I can then trade the smaller timeframes again inside of that channel. And what you don't do is let's say you're short this particular currency and you're sitting here, you know, you shouldn't have a take profit that's sitting down here. You should have a take profit that's more likely probably in this zone, um, but you know, that is also potentially into the support. And I know that makes sense and everyone's like, oh, of course, that's really, really obvious. But again, if you're not looking at, this channel could be on a monthly and you could be trading a daily and you could have a theoretical take profit that's down here for whatever reason, and you're ignoring a super support level. So just always important to, to understand just that top-down approach. And I guess if you get anything out today, try that out if you haven't already done so. Uh, so different chart patterns, how they look in uptrends. These are a couple of the ones that we really like. Sending triangle, double bottom, inverse head and shoulders, flags. Love flags, really great pattern, especially when the markets are trending to get involved in trends throughout. They also give you great take profit levels. Uh, but uh, if you want to find out more about those, you'll have to, of course, do a little bit more research and uh, check out that pattern uh, trading cheat sheet. Roll reversal tie, we talked about this, we talk about it all the time, where support becomes resistance or resistance becomes support. We think it's a great key thing to learn whether you're trading a 15 minute, one hour, four hour or daily or weekly. Um, definitely learn more about roll reversal. You can check out that in our courses or just you know find out some basic stuff online as well. And this is kind of how it would look. So remember we looked at that Euro USD before and we we're talking about how it gives you trade opportunities. So this could be let's say a 15 minute time frame, but we might have that bias like we did before where we're on the daily to the short. So once you've got that bias from the larger time frame, trade the direction of the trend on the smaller time frame. And trading the trend, they always say it's your friend. Um, it's more because that's where the big money is going and the money flow is going in there. And just logically, if you're trading in the trend, generally speaking, on the bigger um, time frames anyway, the economic news that's coming out, whether it be red news, orange news, whatever kind of news, 
will actually help the trade more often than it will hinder it. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, that's not, not necessarily true. I got to stopped out last night and I was trading the trend. It, it, statistically, it will. So do always think about why it's your friend. Couple of little trading tips here, Ty. Look at the larger timeframes, talk about it all the time. Use 80% rule when considering take profits. So if you are looking at a pattern and that pattern is a head and shoulders and it's saying take profit here, consider taking profit at the 80% level rather than everything you want. Don't get too greedy. Unfortunately, the market knows what a pattern looks like as well and will stop just before the end often and then it will reverse. So make sure you consider 80%. Consider gapping as well. Um, there are many different strategies for gapping. Now with Forex, you don't really need to worry too much about gapping during the week, but if you're holding a position over the weekend, um, and especially if you're gonna be holding, let's say, maybe the pound, and it's going into the eventual Brexit that seems to never be happening, um, then that weekend there might be the vote on or something like that you need to consider that as part of your trade, especially if you're trading the smaller timeframes. The smaller the time frame, the smaller the stop loss, the larger the contract generally, which means the bigger the risk of gapping. So do consider yeah. that. <laughs> Most definitely. Now I've got uh, quite a few questions coming in, Thomas, actually more requests that uh, people can't find the, the webinar link. So if you're having trouble locating it and you can't see it in the chat window, just um, send us a message and I'll actually send you the, the link directly. And that goes for the cheat sheet as well. So if you haven't got either of them, just let us know in the little chat window here and um, I'll be able to get it to you. Uh, looking out for red news, Ty, it, everyone should probably know about this nowadays, but if you don't have an economic calendar for Forex, just search economic calendar Forex. Red news is usually the most important news, um, specifically things like interest rate decisions and, and talks from the head of whatever reserve bank you're trading. Um, it's very important to understand. And of course, trading liquid pairs. In Forex, you won't usually need to worry too much about it, but you do want to trade pairs that are traded heavily. And a lot of people are starting to move a bit more exotic nowadays. Always consider, is this currency going to be technically traded and I'm doing technicals or is it going to be a really fundamental based currency? Uh, and I do see that mistake being made a little bit too much. Now, I am wary of time ties, so we won't talk about optimizing entries too much. Uh, target higher R multiples, that's a no brainer. You want to try to make as much money as possible. So you want to try to target better than one to one trades. So if you're risking $100, you want to try to make $100. Now, creating a trading system based on multiple entry criteria. So tonight we've talked a little bit about some different patterns and we've talked about the basis of support resistance. Now, we haven't really talked about candle confirmation, Fibonacci's, MACD, stochastics. We do assume you know some of these things, but what you wanna do, and this is just a really basic kind of concept, but if you find as many reasons as possible to be in a trade, it's actually beneficial to you, and you want to usually lock that down to a few core parts of your system and give it some type of points. And this is kind of like you know when you are creating a business, if you don't have a business strategy, you generally will not be successful. Um, that's not absolute, but I would say that most people that have been in business and had success had a plan. Um, and then it's not just a plan they, they wrote on uh, one piece of paper and didn't think about in one night, they're constantly making adjustments to that plan. So great one to start with, support resistance, another great one to add in patterns and candle confirmations beautiful essence of everything. Then you can bring some of your custom in. So if you want to bring in Fibonacci retracements or maybe some indicators, you do so. And then in this case, if you had 75 points, so you had three of these reasons, that may be enough to place that trade. So hopefully that does make sense, but you don't have to use this, but if, you, if your trading system is based on uh, moving averages and a few other things, Decide what is the basis of everything. What is the most important thing that you always need? Give that a high point score, and then maybe you want trend, and you always want trend. Give trend a price score. And I usually like to make it out of either 100 or maybe 75 or something like that. And if you don't have those reasons, you don't take the trade. It really helps. Uh, we, of course, have our own kind of business plan uh, strategy, which is part of our course called Presic. I won't go into it too much, but it's definitely a great uh, system. We spent a long time on it and uh, 
it's based predominantly on price action. You'll notice the P is price action. Um, so we have a reason. Number and one. <laughs> right. right yeah, number one. one. Yeah. <laughs> and we do want uh, one of each one of these letters here um, to be part of our, our trading system. Yeah, check out uh, our YouTube channel as well. Actually, you can watch a video on Pressic in action and actually see how it can actually build your account and and help your trading. It's actually on um, the FX Evolution um, YouTube channel as well. And I think uh, we'll probably post it. Um, we'll, we'll get the boys at Pepperstone and maybe put it on theirs as well. So because you can you can learn a lot from it. And it really will help your trading if you actually follow some very simple rules. Yeah, that's true. So uh, you can always sign up for our ones as well, our webinars we mentioned by just going to fxevolution.com slash webinar. That won't get you into tonight's one, but it will get you on the list for future ones. And we've had heaps of questions, Ty. I mean, thank you very much for asking everything. Um, we've got a lot of people here tonight, so obviously people love price action. Um, but did you have anything that stood out, Ty, that you thought everyone would want to hear that? And it's a really great question. Yeah, look, I think um, a couple of people asked, uh, do, do you need, um, like, do you like to use price action at support and resistance? I think we talked about that a bit tonight, but yes, if, if you're using price action at those key levels, it makes a massive difference. Uh, another, qu another quite a few questions I've had is, um, do you use indicators? Do we personally use indicators uh, to trade as well as price action? Now, that that is actually a, a good question. We do have a... Um, a basically a stable of indicators that we do use in different market conditions but we always emphasize that the the indicators actually confirm what we kind of already know yes we use them but we never trade just because of them so we use them really just for confirmation to give us a couple of extra layers to really solidify what we kind of already know that the price action is starting to change and um and that sort of thing um makes a big difference when you combine the two elements but we never trade on indicators alone so there were a few questions about which indicators do we trade off we don't actually trade off any indicators but we do use some so um and we've done many look many of the indicators that we have covered we have done in um um earlier versions of the pepperstone webinar so feel free to check out their youtube channel because we do um have some that we've been specific on like stochastics and macd and how to use them best uh, with price action so yeah check out the, there's a big um list of videos that you can watch there to catch yourself up on it and of course if you have any issues feel free to email us at um, support at fxevolution.com and we're happy to answer any questions or point you in the right direction if you're looking for something in particular now, Ty, just as another housekeeping thing, because we've got so many people here, what predominantly would you guys like us to cover um, or what have you wanted us to cover in more detail next year for the webinars as well? Obviously, we're still running them this year, but we've planned those out. If you have ideas, just post that in the room right now, the things that you want. And if I see a lot of them um, for one thing, then, then we'd love to run those uh, because... Okay, so yeah, there's a few coming in. That's nice. Yeah, just because it helps us to to really get involved with what you guys want as well. Sure. Another quick question I'll answer um, online. So we've got um, a question, which indicators do we like to use uh, with price action? So the indicators that we really like to use with price action, uh, in sideways markets, we like to use the RSI and stochastic and Bollinger Bands because we find they complement price action really, really well. In trending markets and when we're looking at price action, we like to use the moving averages, the key moving averages that we taught, uh, we had on the screen tonight, which are the 20 and the 50 EMAs and the 200 uh, SMA. So they're the ones that we like to use, as well as MACD, because MACD is also a trending indicator. Um, and Bollinger Bands actually do help in trending markets as well as sideways markets. So we're very, we don't have a big, big list of indicators that we use. We're really limited to about five or six, but um, all of them tell us very different things about the market and they do complement price action quite nicely. So they're the ones that we do like to stick to. I'm going to uh, do this one. Okay, so I, I've seen quite a few people ask this, which is like to see breakouts and potential of seeing an imminent breakout. It's a great topic. Actually, I'll do that. I'll do that. We'll do that one, Ty. We, we've done a lot of research on that, so... We can definitely cover that one. Hopefully it helps. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. There's so many people here tonight. It's really great to see. And uh, we really appreciate um, your support. And hopefully you've all taken something out of tonight. So we'll either see you in uh, 15 minutes or, or uh, we'll see you in two weeks time for another one of our webinars. And for anyone that's asking tomorrow, uh, this will be uploaded onto Pepperstone's YouTube. So just go to YouTube and then search Pepperstone and it should come up and you can watch it as many times as you want.
seems like lots of people are joining us in 15 minutes too. So hey, that's, hey, that's awesome, guys. Give us yep. a thumbs up. Is that right, Ty? <laughs> yes. I'm not, sure I'm, social, I'm not very social media, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks very Excellent, much. Excellent, guys. Thanks for taking the time to join us and we will see you very soon.